it has finally happened. Diamonds and Pearls Super Deluxe Edition has been released upon the world. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. So real quick, let's get the business out of the way. Uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. And please consider joining my Patreon page. I'll have links for everything down below. So a real quick backstory on this release. So rumors about Diamonds and Pearls being the next Super Deluxe Edition started in 2020. And it came very obvious in 2022 to those who attended Celebration 2022 as they actually played the 1992 Glam Slam show fully restored. Also around this time is when the rumor started circulating that this would not be released as just a Diamonds and Pearls Super Deluxe Edition, but a combination of Diamonds and Pearls and the Love Sexy album, and the working title was Diamonds and Love. And of course, most people lost their mind when they heard about this. And yes, the picture I just showed you is real. Uh, back in 1992, there was a Super Saver edition where they actually put both of these albums together in CD format. But that combination never happened, and we have Diamonds and Pearls over 7 CDs and a Blu-ray, or 12 LPs and a Blu-ray, all fully restored and fully remastered. I myself decided on getting the CD set, and to be honest with you, and to make a confession, I did not pre-order this project because I was given no incentive to do so because there was nothing offered to get me interested in pre-ordering it. It wasn't like if I pre-ordered it, I would save $50 or get like a $50 gift card to the Prince Merchandise Store. Uh, they didn't say, hey, if you pre-order this, you'd get it two weeks earlier than everybody else. And there was not even like anything exclusive offered. Like, hey, if you pre-order, you get, you know, like, two extra remastered tracks or you get like an exclusive t-shirt that only you would get with pre-ordering. So I just waited till October 27th and went to my local Target here in St. Louis and just bought the set. So let's get into the music of this project. We start off with the first CD or the first LP and that is the original Diamonds and Pearls album fully remastered. Now I was kind of curious as far as what they could actually do with the original album as the original album sounds really good. I never noticed any audio issues or mixing issues on the original recording. So I was kind of curious, like I said, as far as what they could actually do to make this better. But a surprise to me, they actually made this album sound even better. Everything is just more clear and crisp, especially on the high ends, as far as like your hi-hats and your snares, they just sound really pristine. And then anything on the lower registry, like your bass, it is just fuller and you really can feel it on like cream when it starts off. And I notice that every individual instrument, you can really like listen and actually single out very well. And vocals are just perfect. I mean, they really did a good job of taking something that was already good and making it great. And it's kind of cool that Bernie Grunman, who mastered the original album, came back to remaster this album. We then get into the singles, mixes, and edits, and a lot of people are complaining about this particular part of the collection as they say that there's a lot of remixes and mixes and edits missing from this collection, but then again, they did release a box set of the singles from this album, which is probably why they didn't include everything on here, so you would go ahead and get the box set. Of course, I'm just speculating, but I believe that's really what happened. Of course, all these songs have the same Midas touch of remastering Shine, just like the original album that they remastered. Now let's move on to what everybody is here for, and that is new Prince music. Of course, I'm talking about the vault tracks. And as we go through these vault tracks, you're going to start to notice that this is almost like the originals part two. And trust me, as I go through these songs, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. We start off with Schoolyard, the most controversial song on this collection, as Prince is telling a story about himself when he was 16 years old and was dating a 14-year-old girl named Carrie. That was his first, if you know what I'm saying. On the official Prince podcast, Andrea Swanson was actually able to track down Carrie and even played the song for her. And the interesting thing about her reaction to the song wasn't the explicit nature of the song or you know him saying stuff like you know I wanted to marry her instead 
she was complaining about the fact that he lied about them driving around when in fact they walked everywhere. Prince also wrote about Carrie in his memoir, The Beautiful Ones, really showing that she had a large impact in his life. My Tender Heart was written by Rosie Gaines and Prince for her album Closer to Close, which would eventually be released in 1993. Rosie would eventually release an album called Concrete Jungle, which is what the original title for Closer to Close was supposed to be, in 2009 and have her version of this song actually on that release. This version is slightly different as the Steels are not doing the background vocals. Pain was originally written by D. Chanson Berry for Rosie Gaines for an album that she was working on prior to meeting Prince. She introduced the song to Prince and he pretty much rewrote and reworked the song and recorded Rosie on lead in 1990. Only to rework the song again in 1993, adding rapper Moni Love to the song. Prince would end up giving the song to Shaka Khan in 1995. Her version of this song was recorded, but the album that it was supposed to go on ended up being canceled and never released. Streetwalker was originally written and recorded by Rosie Gaines in 1989, prior to her meeting Prince. In 1990, Prince produced a slightly different version of this song, and it was performed by Rosie Gaines in the MPG. Lori Ann is a song that was unheard of to most people and based on the fact that it's the only song that the audio doesn't sound as crisp as the others makes me believe that this one was way deep in the vault like way in the back corner of the vault probably has some boxes on it like it was just a forgotten song although it does sound very similar to the one you want to see that version that was released on planet earth dark side is an instrumental and i really dig listening to prince give orders to michael bland and sunny t as they're actually creating this untitled song at the time and prince is absolutely killing it on guitar After an alternative take of Insatiable, we get Glam Slam 91, released live on 95.5 WOL to promote the opening of Prince's Club Glam Slam in Minneapolis. The song samples Love Machine from Graffiti Bridge and 12 from Madhouse. The song features the line, Everybody grab a body, pump it like you want somebody, which would later be used on the song Get Off. After an early version of Live For Love where Prince is featured as the predominant rapper and a second take of the song Cream, which has a heavier rock sound to it, we get Skip To My You, My Darling. Prince, Javetta Steele, and Levi Caesar Jr. wrote the song with Ricky Peterson producing it. It would appear on Javetta Steele's album Here It Is from 1991. My you, after an extended version of Diamonds and Pearls and a slightly longer version of Daddy Pop, we get Martika's Kitchen. Yes, In Martika's Kitchen, baby. Prince wrote and produced the song for Martika's album of the same name and would end up writing several songs for that same album. I kind of wish that their schedules would have lined up more and Prince would have been able to produce the entire album as the album is awesome as it is with him just producing half of the songs but him being able to do the entire album with her I honestly think would be a masterpiece. In kitchen, of course I did a video about Martika's album Martika's Kitchen and I will have a link to that at the end of this video. Spirit, which was another song for Martika's album, Martika's Kitchen. Spirit, 
This was produced by Prince and written by Prince, Levi Caesar Jr., and Martika. So the open book is closing, closing. Open Book was actually inspired by a song by Martika called Safe in the Arms of Love, and some of the lines from that song are reused in this song, which is why she is credited with Prince as the writer of this song. The song was recorded by Javetta Steele and featured on her album Here It Is, but the reissued version, which was released in 1993. Work That Fat uses the music from the song Martika's Kitchen and features Prince using what I can only describe as his Bob George voice, telling a hilarious story of what it's like to date a fat girl. Horny Pony version 2 is very similar lyrically to the release version that we got as a B-side to get off, but musically is completely different as it has more of a digital keyboard focused sound versus like the organic bands, you know, live band sound that we got on the released version. Plus there's no Rosie Gaines on the track at all. Something Funky This House Comes is a pretty much all out band song with the whole group performing on the track and Tony M just leading the charge with his rap skills. No Hold Me was originally offered to Anita Baker who turned it down so then Prince offered it to Javetta Steele who would record the song and include it on the reissue version of her album Here It Is in 1993. Prince would actually rework and record this song again in 1993 with Maite, and at one time it was considered to be included on her solo album, Child of the Sun, but it did not make the final track list. I will see you on the next episode, which will be part two of me going over the vault tracks, and I will also talk about the live recordings from the Glam Slam concert. And don't worry, I will have a part three where I go over all the videos and performances from the Blu-ray. So until that next episode, I wish you heaven.